Hello YouTubes, I'm Nicholas W. Fuller. I'm a writer, I'm a gamer, I'm a fast talker if the last video is any indication. But today I'm going to give you a super fast summary of the awesome book Soulsmith by that wascally Wabatwill White. That's book two in the Cradle series, which is planned to be 12 books, and the 12th and final installment, Waybound, is expected to be coming on June 6th of 2023. So if it wasn't already apparent, I do want to point out this video is definitely going to have spoilers. I plan to go over all the major points and even some of the smaller ones from Soulsmith. Also, if you haven't checked out the previous video, which was my summary of the first book, Unsold, I'd encourage you to go check that out. But now, without any further ado, caveats or setup, information requested. Super fast summary of Soulsmith, Cradle, Volume 2, starting now. Apologies, but actually the first thing we need to discuss are the power levels. This is a progression fantasy after all, and Linen is about to start leveling up. In the beginning of book two, Linen is still foundation. Wah wah. Still weak like baby. <laughs> Yaren is now low gold and a badass, but low gold is kind of the standard for most people outside of Sacred Valley. It turns out everyone in Sacred Valley is weak like children, if not weak like baby. Inside Sacred Valley, they didn't even know that gold level existed, so they're all weak like babies. <laughs> the power levels so far go foundation, where Linen still is, then copper, then iron, where your body is renewed and made much stronger, jade, and then gold, high gold and true gold and that's totally it that's all of the levels right right that's definitely there's nothing higher except that we do know of people like the eight man empire and the weird super powered homeless looking dude that we eventually learned as norse writer and we learned all that from serial the super cool space angel that glued linen back together in book one but anyway on with the story we start out soulsmith with linen and yaren having just got out of sacred valley and into the desolate wilds after fighting their way through the heaven's glory school that killed yaren's mentor rude. Yaren's like, bleed me dry. I got an idea. How about we make you not quite so weak like baby? Linen's like, apologies, but how? I mean, hell yeah, but how? But Yaren has it covered. She swiped an awesome spirit fruit from the school they fought their way out of, and this one is much better than the one Linen had from the tree in the beginning of the unsold. Linen eats the fruit, takes a nap, and levels up to copper. Yay! While Linen levels, Yaren stops some ambushers. Linen wakes up and joins the fight, despite being just a copper, and the ambushers also being gold. Linen be crazy like that. But they have to flee the remnants, so they hole up in a tree and Linen etches some script batter onto the tree, and they both get some well-earned sleep. Around this time, we learn that Serial, the super cool space angel that came down, reversed time, glued Linen back together, and gave him that sweet little marble he carries around. She's off destroying a planet right now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that planet is super messed up and going all topsy-turvy because it's not connected to the way anymore. This would normally be the job of some other space angel who is actually more of a reaper of death named Osriel, but he peaced out a while ago and Cyril's main gig right now is trying to find him and dragging his ass back to work. But back to our boy Linden. He and Yaren wake up and there's three dread beast doggies outside the script barrier. Wah wah. They figure they have to fight, which is Yaren's way of dealing with any problem, but a wave of vital aura wishes by and the dread beasts and remnants go, what was that? And take off after it. Turns out a weird giant pyramid has sprung up out of the ground, as you do. It's spewing Vital Ori, which keeps attracting all the nearby dread beasts, but there's tons of sacred artists there that are lured by the promises of fat loots inside. There, Yaren and Linden meet the Sand Vipers, and Linden tries to apologize his way out of being noticed, but instead, Yaren embarrasses them in a fight. So then the Sand Vipers are kind of pissed, but not so much at Yaren because she's a badass, mostly at Linden, and mostly because he's still weak like baby. We also first meet Ethan, and he's like, yo, Linden's got a cool space marble in his pocket, and Yaren is kind of a badass. I think I might train these kids, but it ain't going to be obvious or fun. <laughs> you get the sense from this very first interaction that there's more to Ethan than he lets on, but we are just as in the dark as all the characters around him. Then Jai Long yes, shows up. He is a disgraced member of the Jai clan, but now hangs with the Sand Vipers and wants the magic spear in the pyramid that lets it consume the revenants of those he kill. He'll be able to level enough and take revenge on the Jai clan that way, because remember, he's a disgraced member. That's so. Plus, he's got this creepy face wrap thing going on, and he's all brooding and mysterious and good villain stuff, good villain stuff. We'll probably be seeing more of him because he's got main villain energy strong enough for at least a couple books. But Jai Long is like, yo, we all got to hurry up because soon a member of the Aurelius family will be arriving. They are way stronger than any of us. He even says this to a rival sect, the Fishers, we got to work together or the Aurelius family will get all the fat loots out of this pyramid. We won't get jet. The Fishers are like, you tripping. So they call their leader Fisher Geisha, who comes in floating on top of her badass mechanical spider bot thing, and Linen's like, I have got to get me one of these. Oh, wait, was that that's the wrong story? Wrong. Apologies. But he really likes it. So Fisher Geisha is like, I guess we can work with the Sand Vipers for now to get the fat loots, hmm? And Linen's like, yo, I'm going to follow Fisher Geisha until she teaches me how to make cool spider bot thingies. And Yaren's like, I, I guess I'm going to follow you. Fisher Geisha thinks Linen is kind of useless, but Yaren offers to bring her bits of dread beast she kills, which Fisher Geisha can use in her crafting, so then Fisher Geisha is a bit more warmed up to them both. Hmm? 
Linen and Yaren learn from Fisher Geisha that the Jai clan and others are using captives to refine the vital aura into money called scales using machines in the pyramid. It's dangerous, though, because the machines in the vital aura also track dread beasts, but the Jai clan thinks dead captains are not that big of a deal. Then the Sand Viper clan kidnaps Linden to make sure, make him one of the aura miners, which is easy to do because even as a copper now, he is still super weak like baby compared to everyone else. So now he's in a cage with people with lost limbs and such. Mining ain't easy. But Linden, ever the wily one, notices when they collect the money, and then Fisher Keisha saves him. Hmm? Linden and Yaren then try to steal the scales from the Sand Vipers that he, he noticed when they, you know, where they have the money, but they get caught by Jai Long. <sighs> Fisher Geisha arrives to save him, hmm? but instead leaves them there to save face. Wah, wah. Apologies. But all is not lost for the eccentric Athan takes notice of the situation and surrenders himself as a captive as well. Uh, why? We don't know yet. But when they go into the pyramid to mine, Dreadbeast of course attack. Athan then leads Linen and Yaren away from their captors and takes them all deeper into the pyramid, giving Linen cycling tips as they go, until, wah, wah, he locks Linen in a room with two Dreadbeasts. Linden barely manages to kill them by crushing one beneath a rock and tricking the remnants of the two to fight each other. But he's he's definitely still weak like baby, but he's also pretty clever, actually. He does all this like trickery to get out of things. So so begins two weeks of Athan making Aaron and Linden grind for XP in the pyramid. It's like a fantasy version of naval SEAL training or something. It's awful. Wave after wave of Dreadbees come, and they're barely able to survive the attacks, much less stave off starvation and dehydration. It isn't long before Linen is practically dead and too hurt from Dreadbees to move. Athan then removes the door and tells him it's time to advance to iron. But it's going to super suck. Wah, wah. To get the Bloodforged Iron Body, Linen must take in the venom from a sand viper and use its poison to burn Modra channels into his body. It's excruciating, but Lennon asks for more and more and more to make sure he's done enough and has enough of that venom and Madra channels. Ethan goes through five sand vipers pumping all their venom into him. Yuren threatens to kill Ethan for killing Lennon, but Ethan says, yo, he wanted it. And Lennon does actually survive and advance to iron rather than die. Yay! Cut to the Sand Viper clan, and they're advancing one of the younglings to iron in the same way, except they use a single drop a single drop, and wonder if it's too much. That's our first hint that maybe, just maybe, Linen ain't playing, you know? As the ceremony is ending, the Sand Vipers see the Aurelius airship on the horizon. The Sand Vipers, which I long, hiss, group with the fishers and make a final go to the pyramid, hoping to get the magic spear before they lose their chance. So everyone heads up to the top of the pyramid where they're pretty sure the magic spear is, but before that, Athan takes Linen and Yaren up that way. They see a door that looks like one of the ancestors' tomb in Sacred Valley where Yaren got her mentor's remnant. That seems like an important factor for later, hmm? But they also find the spear and some bindings like the one that give the spirits awesome remnant suction powers and some notes on how the spear was made, which just tickles Linden because he loves that stuff. Plus some scripted Black River Stones. Then boom, the Sand Vipers break in, fighting breaks out. The Sand Viper leader tries to kill Linden, but Linden's new iron body sloughs off his poison like it ain't no thing. Ethan distracts him and Linden uses the binding and kills him. I mean, apologies. Uh, fighting dies down. Shylong is furious that Linden killed his friend, the, the guy with the Sand Vipers, and challenges Linden to a duel. Even though Linden, while he's now iron, he is still weak like baby compared to this Shylong who is a high gold. Wah, wah. Ethan could stop it, but surprise, he is from the powerful Aurelius family, and he is an underlord. Oh, wah, an underlord. That's the next level of advancement beyond gold. So boom, he's like, save the day, right? He, ad he d adopts uh, Linden and Yaren and his family. It's all good. No, he does adopt them, but Ethan then says, hey, the duel is on, and it's in a year. Linden gulps. And see, that's it. That's Soul Smith. <laughs> in just a few minutes, hope you like that super fast recap. That's uh, all the major elements of Soul Smith. If you like this video, this one asks you to please like and subscribe and make sure and click the little bell thingy. You know the setting. You know what I'm talking about. I'm working on having one of these videos for each book up to Dread God and having them all out before the launch of Waybound. So, you know, make sure you're checking in on that. Also, be sure to check out some other videos on this channel. I do lots of different book stuff, some game stuff. I think you'll like it. Thank you for watching. And if no one's told you today, you're wonderful. And I see you practicing your sacred arts and you've got some sick moves. <laughs>